Hi everyone, this video we're going to be going over through interviews and all the different types that are out there and how do you manage those. Okay. So an interview can be as short as 25 minutes on the phone or it can be as long as a couple of days and it could be over weeks, multiple days, depending on, on where you're applying for. So let's talk about the different types of interviews. So an academic interview, how does that work? Well, usually the applications are sent out a year earlier than the start date. So if the start date is usually July 1st, then the applications could be July 1st of the previous year, or it could be in the fall sometime. And then CVs are collected, letter of intents are collected, and then interviews are done usually around January-ish. Could be earlier. So the CV, everyone I think knows how to write an academic CV, that's how you got here. Um, and the cover letter, it's about your research. It should be about your research plan, it should be about why you want to apply for that particular university, why that department, and of what you can bring to the department, and what are the potential collaborations you could bring. So it's about, again, your future research plan and your future plan as a professor of that school. Now, once you get that um, interview, what a typical interview is uh, a full day, day one, and the first is usually your talk. The talk should be um, an hour long. Some universities start at 10 after the hour, so that means 50 minutes, but you wanna leave enough time for questions. And I find the best talks are the ones that leave at least 10 minutes for questions. So really your one hour talk is about 40 minutes or so. So after the hour talk, you're going to um, go to another smaller room. So the first hour is an open talk to everyone that wants to attend. And then the second talk is called a chalk talk. And a chalk talk is where you're in a smaller room, you're basically given chalk or a whiteboard, and then you have to um, field questions from all the faculty that are interested in attending. So it can be mostly about research. What is your five-year research plan? Um, your experience in grants uh, for a typical PhD, PhD student? What sort of project would you give them? All sort of research questions and where do you see your research going? What are the collaborations you're going to bring? So basically your research plan. And if you were to come to that particular university, what do you need? So what kind of equipment would you like? If you had the magic uh, lottery, how much money would you need for your equipment? So all these things. Other questions you might want to know are, you know, why that particular university? You know, did a postdoc in um, Scotland or the UK, why do you want to come to Canada or why do you want to uh, come to California, wherever that place may be? And the other questions are about mentoring and teaching, because that's a big component of being a professor, is what is, uh, for, uh, for example, a question could be, what were your previous students uh, say your teaching style is? Or how would you describe yourself as a mentor? What is your mentoring style? Do you know anything about the individual development plan? Um, so those type of questions and also prepare questions for them. Do you have any questions for us? So you should have lots of questions about the department, about your research, about, about um, I mean, the collaborative nature of your research, not your research, but the collaborative nature, and where you think that department um, is heading, how many courses will you, want, will you have to teach the first year, what are the grants um, that are available as, as a collaborative team, so questions like that, um, you should have an idea of what, they, what you might think the answers are, but if you have specific questions, it's a, it's a great time to ask them. I think the worst thing is when someone asks you, do you have any questions for us, and you stand there and you have no questions, then that's kind of awkward. Uh, so prepare questions ahead of time, and I'm sure some of the questions will come up when, uh, during the talk. So after that full day, after that half a day almost, you're going to have lunch. Sometimes it's lunch with grad students and postdocs, and they're going to have a lunch with you, and they are also responsible in giving feedback to the selection committee on what they thought your uh, experience was like with you during um, lunch and the conversation. And then after that, you're going to have 
little mini meetings with various professors throughout the day, usually around half an hour long. And you're there talking to them about your work, but also about their work. So be prepared with whoever's on the agenda to look up their research and what they've been doing and how it may be in synergy with your research. After that, there is a dinner component where uh, some of the faculty will take you out to dinner and this is still part of the interview because they are interviewing someone that could be part of their team for a long time, hopefully. So they want to make sure that, um, that you are, that you uh, um, do well in, in a group setting with, with everyone. Now after that, after they interview maybe six or seven or eight, depending on how many people they're going to interview, after those candidates, the selection committee will make uh, a decision and then contact whoever that they want to uh, bring in back again. And usually the second interview is sort of more of a recruitment interview on seeing if you're interested uh, to attend. And this is when negotiations may happen or you might want to go see what kind of um, neighborhoods you want to move into. This is sort of closer to that, to that goal. And then, um, then you talk about the, the letter of offer and, and, and what is involved in, in starting your lab. Okay. So government jobs. Government jar, jobs are a little bit different. In terms of time frame, some government jobs you do also have to apply way in advance, about a year earlier. There's lots of more kind of security checks involved because it is government. And um, the process is a little bit more like um, academia than it is industry sometimes. Um, there, it could range from depending on where you're applying to, federal or provincial or local, um, the types of interviews vary. And you sometimes I might ask you to give a talk, sometimes not. It's, it's going to depend. So industry, uh, industry interviews, which I've had the experience in, is that the uh, sometimes you have the 20 minute phone interview before the actual interview so hr may say we've been selected for an interview we're going to be talking to you for about 20 25 minutes over the phone and usually this hr interview are questions that are uh, not as scientific as you think they might be so they might be uh, why are you the best candidate for this job why do you think you're the best candidate for this job um, any sort of behavioral organizational questions is this is when they might ask. So for example, why, uh, what have you, have you ever experienced conflict at the workplace? And then how did you resolve it? Um, and why given a team setting, if somebody wasn't performing as well, how would you deal with that? So these are type of the scenario questions they may ask you. And then, and then after that, then you may go for the full sort of uh, boardroom interview where you're going to give your science talk and they're going to be talking to various people on the industry team. This may go on for half a day, it may go on for a full day, depending on where you're applying for. Uh, I had one colleague and for his industry position, he had six rounds of interviews. So it depends really on the industry. There's no set formula. But there are some questions that you should be aware of. If you go to the University of Toronto Career website, they have a whole bunch of interview questions that you should be able to answer. And uh, one of the questions that you really want to know is, that you really want to have practiced with, is tell me about yourself. And this is a, a great way for the interviewer to uh, break the ice. Oh, come on in, welcome, tell me about yourself, or tell us about yourself. So this question is not really, oh, I like to watch movies, and I like to bake, and I like to go ice skating. This is not really what they're asking for. If you want to reframe, tell me about yourself. It is, what are you currently doing? What have you done in the past? And how is that propelling you into the future? Or why do you want to work for this company? Okay. So if you address, this is what I've done, this is what I've done in the past, this is what I hope to do for you in the future, in maybe five sentences, five or six sentences, that's how you can answer this question. If you Google answering this question, tell me about yourself, there's one, an article in workforce.com, I do believe, where they tell different ways to answer this question. But I personally like the way to describe it as what I'm doing now, what I did in the past, and what I hope to do in the future for your company. Okay. Here's another question that one of my colleagues have asked is, bring me your resume to life. 
And so your resume has all these things that you've done. So basically, they want to know who are you as a person? What inspired you to do all these things? And again, each of your questions should be not so long, a couple minutes. Maybe the answer should be about one to two minutes. So if they want to ask you more on that, then you can talk about that. Okay. And all of your questions should, um, just like the resume had car statements, the interview questions has what's called star statements. Okay. So STAR stands for situation, task, action, and results. So if, you've asked a, if they've asked a question about something on your interview, then you're going to talk about the situation that it occurred in, the task that, it, that you may have to deal with, the action that you took, and the results. Okay. So that's what you want to tell the story about. So here's another one. Tell me something not on your resume. So this is kind of tricky. It's like, how do you say something that's not on your resume and you thought that's pertinent to the job? So you have to come up with something that is sort of pertinent to the job, but you didn't put on your resume and why not? So an example would be, for me, I would say, well, I was been involved in musical theater ever since I was in primary school and that has helped me become a better presenter. Okay. So now I'm talking about something that has nothing to do with um, biochemistry, but it helps with some aspects of the job. So here's one you're going to be using the, the STAR technique, and that is tell me about a time when you had a conflict at the workplace and how did you resolve it. So you have to set up the situation or the task at hand, talk about the action you took and the results that came out of it. And this is a very common question that you should be prepared to answer. Uh, what you should not say is, well, I don't talk to this person anymore, but you should be talking about how you resolve that conflict and how you um, understood from their point of view. So what I do in our class is that this is a time where we uh, break up into pairs and you give each other mock interviews. So we go over these questions and um, each of them take roles in being the interviewer and the interviewee and then they ask and answer these questions. So they get practice in tell me about yourself, the conflict at the workplace, and, the, any, and any other question that they want to have practiced with. So one of my students, actually several of my students, had said, I'm really glad that we went over the three-minute thesis in your class, because that was actually a question in my interview. So what does that mean? Some of the interviews that you go to, especially if you're a PhD student and you're going for a research, um, high sort of um, uh, maybe a research director job or a communications job, they might ask you that question. Tell us about your work to our development team who have no idea what biotechnology is or tell us about it in a three minute thesis kind of way. So in my next video, we're gonna be talking about the best ways to present your research in three minutes or less.